Thank you so much for watching this preview for the next AI Weekly Update on Henry AI Labs. This is intended to give you a quick sense of the content that we covered in the next video and maybe give you some different items for a weekend reading list. So this has been a really exciting week in deep learning. We've seen OpenAI's multimodal neurons and artificial neural networks examining this image text clip model and doing this kind of feature visualization stuff that has this really interesting new uh, result as a result of having this text interface for these visual uh, deep dream style features. So also in the area of vision text data sets, we have a new data set, Wikipedia images, we have image text pairs. We have about 38 million of these pairs also in different languages. Uh, Jan LeCun has written a new post on self-supervised learning, the dark matter of intelligence, and Facebook AI research has also uh, come up with some new experiments using these uh, a billion Instagram images, the suave clustering, the regnet architecture, and really scaling up this idea of self-supervised learning in the wild. Uh, we have a healthy new crop of new transformer networks and all sorts of other content that will be covered in this video. Everything is uh, linked in the description of the video, and I really hope you find this preview to be useful and hopefully find something interesting to read over the weekend. The weekly update will begin by diving deeper into OpenAI's multimodal neurons and artificial neural networks. The Distilled publication has also made a post about this, and I think, I think it's the same post just posted uh, on both of the different blogging sites or publication site, and we're going to really get into the details of this. I've seen uh, in the past things from Distilled publication like the AI microscope and a lot of work on trying to do this uh, feature visualization with things like Deep Dream. There's also a paper called Dream to Distill that's interesting where you generate these images for the sake of knowledge distillation and all these kind of interesting things about trying to uh, see these kind of intermediate uh, activation. So this idea of the text interface should be a huge advancement and I'm really excited to get deeper into the details and see exactly what's going on with this. While on the topic of these exciting image text models like Dolly and Clip and now this multimodal neuron visualization, there's also a new data set from Google Research Datasets, a Wikipedia-based image text data set. So as stated in this GitHub repository, they have 37.6 million entity-rich image text examples with 11.5 unique, 11.5 million unique images across 108 Wikipedia languages. So not only is it a multilingual data set, but it's this gigantic image text data set sourced from Wikipedia. So this should be really promising for people looking to uh, train these vision language models like Dolly and Clip for themselves and really take advantage of this kind of research. So we'll dive through this uh, research paper as well as this GitHub repository and see what's happening with this data set. Another exciting news item is Jan LeCun has a new blog post explaining self-supervised learning. Self-supervised learning has clearly come a long way and it's no longer this uh, fringe idea of some alternative paradigm to supervised learning. It's clearly had huge advancements in things like language model and the contrastive learning successes in vision. So this is describing uh, self-supervised learning as predictive learning, these ideas like energy-based models and these kinds of things. It's very similar to the, if you've seen our Machine Learning Street Talk channel, uh, when uh, Tim Scarf, Yana Kilcher, and I took apart this uh, Jan LeCun's ICLR 2020 presentation, it looks like this is uh, the, the sequel to that and fleshing out these ideas even further. So I'm really excited to read more about this. So also on this topic of self-supervised learning, Facebook AI research has published SEER, the state of a more powerful, flexible, and accessible era for computer vision. So this is a test on this contrastive learning system. And previously they had done an experiment like this where they used weekly supervised learning with Instagram images labeled by their hashtags. So you would fit the labels of the hashtags and that worked pretty well. They had a, a very similar training pipeline to the uh, self-training with noisy student loop where they use these weekly labeled Instagram images. And now it looks like they're taking these at uh, the same, uh, it describes how they have this billion images of Instagram images and uh, they're using the suave contrastive learning algorithm. Suave has this interesting clustering algorithm. I've made a video on it on Henry AI Labs if you want to go deeper into that. It's different from SimClear, uh, SimSciam, and MoCo, uh, be, mainly because of this clustering idea. It's closer to the idea from Salesforce Research, which is a PCL prototypical uh, contrastive learning. So they're going to be scaling this up, testing it with the suave algorithm, and using RegNet architectures. Definitely excited to see what the results are behind this. It's been about two months since the dataset paper Wilds was published. Wild is a data set that accounts for these out of distribution shifts that happen in the wild and things like hospitals, robots, or all these different kinds of applications. So now we have finally some uh, follow on work describing principles for tackling distribution shift, pessimism, adaptation, and anticipation from Chelsea Finn. This is about a one hour lecture and I've already watched about four minutes of it and it looks like it's going to be really information dense and a really exciting topic. I think Wild is going to be one of the most important papers that have been published. This idea of how do we account for distribution shift, generalization metrics, obviously incredibly important before we can really use deep learning on serious problems. Next up is the paper, Do Transformer Modifications Transfer Across Implementations and Applications? 
Keeping up with the research on these new ideas for overcoming the quadratic complexity in attention has been one of the biggest headaches for me trying to keep up with deep learning research. There, is, there are so many new advances and new designs for transformers, and it looks like this paper is kind of bringing that down to earth a little bit and saying that it doesn't really uh, result in serious improvements on it looks like the super glue benchmark and the web questions uh, question answering data set. So I think um, there was another paper that was published, I think it was uh, ICML or something like that, titled uh, Long Range Arena. And it's particularly about this idea that the reason these transformers are uh, becoming more efficient, why there's so much research on getting rid of that quadratic complexity, is so the input length can be more than 512 tokens. So I'm not so sure this is a fair comparison. It does have extreme summarization also, which I think you know obviously means taking in a longer document with these other kinds of architectures. So maybe that's what they're referring to, but it, it looks like there is a serious amount of decomposition, activation functions, the normalization layers, the you know dev block sharing. So it might not just be kind of like these uh, big headline names, like down here we do see like funnel transformer, linformer, performer, reformer, all those kinds of things. But either way, I'm a little late to this, it's about uh, two weeks old now, but this does seem like a really important paper uh, kind of grounding this really rapidly evolving area of deep learning research. To kind of highlight this trend even further, in this weekly update, we'll cover two more different uh, new transformer designs. So this first paper, Transformer in Transformer, these TNT blocks, take issue with the design of the visual transform, the vision transformer from Google AI research. The idea of the vision transformer from Google research, I've recently made a code example walkthrough video on the Keras code examples. What you do is you take an image and then you split it into a grid of patches, and then you have an embedding on the patches. And it looks like the uh, these authors take an issue with the uh, assigning the position embedding to a whole entire patch because this patch could be say uh, 12 by 12 pixels and then you have 144 pixels that are all uh, blindly aggregated with the same grid position embedding so it looks like they're further taking apart each of these patches with a nested transformer block so you have like a global transformer block on the patches and then each of them has this nested layer of another transformer on the pixel embeddings themselves so this should be an interesting framework and I'm curious to see if such a subtle design has really uh, changed the performance dramatically. This next one has the fantastic title of Generative Adversarial Transformers. So here are some examples of the images generated by the GANSformer, the Generative Adversarial Transformer. This is the clever benchmark, looks like the L-Sun bedroom, and then you have just super high resolution images, similar to the quality produced by the style GAN model, but with a different kind of design to it. So from what I've read so far, it seems like uh, there's something about the global local uh, feature aggregation in this and they're def designing these two new uh, attention kind of operations with uh, the simplex is describing a forward pass between these set mappings and then duplex refer referring to forward and backwards but uh, my issue with this paper so far just skimming through it is it doesn't look like there's like a, a diagram of the feature propagation there's these equations which probably communicate it and you know i haven't completely read the paper so i'm not sure yet but I am excited to see the, the kind of the integration of, we've seen um, previously the, uh, I'm not sure exactly what the title of the paper was, but I think it was as recently as last week, there was an architecture where they have a generative adversarial network and the generator and the discriminator are both replaced by vision transformer architecture. So I'm curious to see exactly how this differs from that. Here's a paper from the little bit I've read I'm really excited about. It's titled Ultra Data Efficient GAN Training, Drawing a Lottery Ticket First, Then Training It Toughly. So we've seen some advances. Uh, NVIDIA has published this paper called uh, something like Adaptive Discriminator Augmentation. They use this uh, filtering of, they call it these goggles, where they put the data augmentation into the generative adversarial network training loop, and it results in being able to train GANs with, this, with less data. So this is another advance in that direction. They claim that you can train a GAN with just 100 images, which is amazing. And they do this by exploiting the lottery ticket idea, and that's really exciting because the lottery ticket idea is this idea that you can find the sparse subnetwork that will achieve the same performance and you can train it from scratch. So it saves computation and it looks like there's also some interplay that they're describing with data efficient training. Things like uh, the adversarial augmentation paper from Google where they're doing this feature space augmentation similar to if you watch the paper summary video I made on modals, which is modality agnostic data augmentation done in the feature space. In this case, it looks like it's controlled with an adversarial controller. So I'm really excited to see how these ideas come together, lottery tickets, adversarial uh, feature augmentation, and then overall making data efficient GAN training, which is a really exciting area of research. Similar to the advances in image text learning and OpenAI's Dolly and Clip, we've seen a paper titled Convert that showed how you could use, how you could use the pairings between uh, radiology images like chest x-rays and then the radiology reports to, do, to form the positive pairs for contrastive learning. 
Well, this paper is showing that there's actually an issue with the way that these labels don't actually agree with the radiology reports. And that's obviously super problematic. Kind of reminds me of the paper metric learning a reality check in the sense that maybe these experiments haven't been properly designed, the data sets haven't been properly uh, curated. And I find this surprising that, you know, these labels that have been given to the images didn't match the labels extracted from the radiology report. So I'm excited to read more about exactly how this is. This next paper is going to lie on the border of machine learning, deep learning and biology, which is probably one of the most exciting intersections out there. So this paper, whole cell segmentation of tissue images with human level performance, probably best uh, described in Noah Greenwald's uh, Twitter thread describing his research. Uh, they they have this cell segmentation model that's able to uh, you know, perform this task of identifying cells and image data. He describes how this is a hard problem. And then particularly the um, advancement is that they've curated this new data set called TissueNet. So TissueNet has more than 1 million manually annotated cells. And as a result, you know, big label data, we're seeing these gains in performances. And, you know, I don't know much about biology, so I'm not sure exactly what the problem is here. But, you know, I'm really excited to learn more about this. And it looks like a really exciting uh, step forward. There's also a Kaggle competition on uh, cell atlas classification, something like that. And I'm not sure if these are over, uh, these are the same kind of idea or not, but definitely cool to see deep learning and biology in these kind of applications. We also have a new Kaggle competition on molecular translation. Can you translate chemical images to text? So in some of these papers like uh, chemical BERT, I think is the name of it, or some, you know, more clever way of smashing those two words together, like Kemberta or something like that. They're talking about uh, aligning chemicals by putting them into the smiles text language. So smiles is a language for uh, writing chemicals such that you can input it to a deep neural network. This task is uh, a different kind of language. It's, um, it's called the International Chemical Identifier, INCHL, text string of an image. And so you have basically uh, like drawings of chemicals or other kinds of things like that. And you're tasked with translating them into, or see if it loads, but, and see, and you're tasked with translating it into the text language that would be an input to something like the uh, BERT models that are trained on these chemical property tests. If you thought the DALI model was impressive, it looks like generative models are still just taking off this latest paper from DeepMind predicting video with the vector quantized variational autoencoder. The vector quantized variational autoencoder has been the hero of a lot of these latest uh, advances in generative modeling. This, the idea is basically you have this discrete code book for the latent variables and they are hierarchically organized. I'm not exactly sure how that how that's managed and exactly how the gradients flow through that and all that kind of stuff. But it's the VQVA is clearly working well. And this is examples of modeling a tidal wave, fourth frame, ninth frame, 16th frame. As you probably already know, video data is organized with 30 frames per second. So it looks like it's predicting almost a whole second in the future of this tidal wave and all kinds of things. I'm really excited to see the details of this and how they implement it. And this kind of idea, the VQVA, uh, really diving into this architecture and this amazing idea of being able to predict videos should be really exciting for things like model-based reinforcement learning and then generally these kind of uh, like wow look at this ai application where you generate videos and this kinetic 600 data set is a serious data set of uh, videos for this kind of task next up i'm a little late to the party on this one but towards causal representation learning Similarly to this wild data set and these ideas of the kind of distribution shift we're anticipating, causal inference, causal machine learning, uh, it seems like uh, Yashu Benjo, he's been really on this and publishing a lot of things. I've recently done an AI Weekly Update that walked through a talk that he gave on these concepts of system one, system two learning, and how causal machine learning and this kind of sparse factor graph idea ties into that. It seems like things like these multimodal neurons, the beginning of this thing with OpenAI and it seems like maybe we're having more interpretable representations, these abstractions that can form these like symbolic programs or similarly to Francois Chalet's talk, the uh, abstraction and reasoning and that kind of thing. So I'm really excited to read this. I'm, I'm predicting not to be able to completely understand all the ideas, but I think that there is something really interesting, the intersection of deep learning and causal inference. Adaptive consistency regularization for semi-supervised transfer learning looks to be another important step in this pipeline of building these semi-supervised learning models that leverage things like uh, pseudo labeling or data augmentation and this kind of idea of consistency losses and contrastive losses. So it has these this new architecture and I'm excited to look through the details of this and see what's new. It reminds me of a recent paper from Salesforce titled Co-Match. Automated machine learning describes using these hyperparameter tuning algorithms like 
hyperband or adaptive ASHA or Bayesian optimization in order to find the optimal hyperparameters for a deep learning training algorithm compared to uh, manually relying on expertise and you know manually deciding on these hyperparameters. So I'm really excited to read this paper, Automated Machine Learning for Genomics. One, just to see what these uh, genetic problems are and how they're phrased as machine learning problems, and then to see the advances and the differences that are made possible by using this automated machine learning tools. If you've seen recent videos, I'm really excited about the Determined AI training platform, which implements these things like Hyperband and Asha and makes it really easy to use. So I'm really excited to see the gains that are made possible by this AutoML technology. On the topic of new transformer designs, we've got another one this week, Perceiver, General Perception with Iterative Attention. So I'm really excited to see again, it describes that they are able to directly attend on 50,000 pixels. So a new kind of way of doing these uh, transformers for computer vision and being able to directly attend to 50,000 pixels is different from say the uh, vision transformer that splits it up into grids. So I'm really excited to see exactly what this mechanism is and how this is gonna improve computer vision with transformers. We've seen some really astonishing advances in things like neural radiance fields where you take these two dimensional images and then it can synthesize this three dimensional grid such that you have these rotations that aren't just like these 2D uh, pixel grid rotations. There are these rotations where you rotate on kind of like the depth axis and you see this really interesting new view of a static two-dimensional image. So this paper is exploring can we actually use this kind of functionality for data augmentation for heavily studied problems like image classification and in this case object detection. So I'm really excited to see exactly how this works, how the neural rendering module is able to perform as data augmentation. It seems to me like this should be a really promising area of research. Next up, we have improving computational efficiency in visual reinforcement learning via stored embeddings. This looks to be another really exciting paper in visual representation learning and reinforcement learning tasks like the DeepMind control environments and Atari games. So I'm really excited to see what the new algorithm is behind this paper. Thank you so much for watching the preview for the next AI Weekly Update video, which will be released March 8th. Thank you so much and please subscribe and stay tuned for the next AI Weekly Update video.